Immerse in the pages of time where our journey begins, the Indus Valley Civilization, one of the world's oldest urban civilizations. Flourishing around 5,000 years ago, this civilization was marked by remarkable city planning, with roads intersecting at right angles and advanced drainage systems. The people skilled in various crafts traded with distant lands and lived in well-ordered cities like Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro. Their culture, rich and vibrant, was marked by a unique script which even today remains an enigma to scholars around the globe. This civilization, its rise, its zenith and its gradual decline forms the very foundation of India's multifaceted heritage. As we delve deeper into the annals of time, we uncover a civilization that was way ahead of its contemporaries, setting the stage for the cultures and empires that were to follow. As we leave the streets of Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro, we step into a new era, the Vedic period. Enter the realm of the Vedic period, a critical epoch that shaped much of India's social and cultural contours. This era, stretching from around 1500 to 500 BCE, witnessed the composition of the sacred Vedas. These early religious texts, written in Sanskrit, form the bedrock of Hindu philosophy, rituals and beliefs. The Rig Veda, the oldest among them, contains hymns dedicated to various deities, establishing the foundations of Hindu polytheism. The Yajurveda, Samaveda and Atharvaveda followed, each adding new layers to the religious and philosophical tapestry. During this period, we also see the emergence of the caste system, a hierarchical social structure that has profoundly influenced Indian society. Initially based on occupation and duties, this system eventually became hereditary, leading to significant social changes. From the spiritual hymns of the Vedas, we march towards the might of the Mauryan Empire. Welcome to the era of the Maurya Empire, where one of history's greatest rulers, Ashoka the Great, reigned. The Maurya Empire, originating from the fertile plains of the Ganges, emerged as a dominant power in the 4th century BC. Its most notable emperor, Ashoka, ascended the throne and embarked on a mission of territorial conquest, culminating in the brutal Kalinga War. Stunned by the bloodshed and devastation, Ashoka embraced Buddhism, transforming from a ruthless conqueror into a benevolent ruler. His reign marked a distinct shift in India's political landscape. He erected numerous edicts across the empire, inscribed on pillars and rocks, promoting moral and social codes based on Buddhist teachings. His influence extended beyond borders as he sent Buddhist missionaries far and wide. Ashoka's reign left an indelible mark on Indian history, with his edict serving as a testament to a transformative period of governance and spirituality. As the Mauryan sun sets, we see the dawn of India's golden age under the Gupta Empire. Step into the Golden Age of India, an era of peace, prosperity and great intellectual growth under the Gupta Empire. The Guptas, reigning from the 4th to the 6th century, illuminated the Indian subcontinent with their enlightened rule. This period is marked by remarkable achievements in various fields. The world of art witnessed a renaissance of sorts with sculptures and paintings reflecting the life and culture of the time. Literature too flourished under the Guptas with the creation of classic Sanskrit literature, including the famous plays of Kalidasa. Science and mathematics reached new heights with Aryabhata's astronomical theories and the invention of the concept of zero, laying the foundation for future mathematical advances. The Gupta era was truly the golden age, a beacon of knowledge and culture in India's vast historical landscape. From the Golden Age, we transition into a period of great change, the arrival of Islam. Uh, witness a pivotal moment in Indian history, the arrival of Islam and the establishment of the Delhi Sultanate. This defining chapter began in the 8th century when Arab traders and missionaries introduced Islam to the Indian subcontinent. As it spread, a cultural exchange unfolded, permeating various aspects of Indian society. The Delhi Sultanate, established in the 13th century, marked the first significant Islamic empire in India. This era saw a blend of Islamic and Indian architecture, giving birth to a unique style known as Indo-Islamic architecture. The Kutpa Mina in Delhi, one of the earliest and most prominent examples of this, stands as a testament to this cultural fusion. 
This period also bore witness to advancements in art, literature and music, with the introduction of new forms and styles that continue to influence Indian culture today. As we bid farewell to the Sultanate, we enter the era of the Grand Mughal Empire. Embrace the opulence of the Mughal Empire, a period of unparalleled architectural brilliance and cultural synthesis. This era, beginning in the 16th century, was marked by the ascension of some of the most significant emperors in Indian history, such as Akbar and Shah Jahan. Akbar, known for his religious tolerance and administrative acumen, played a crucial role in laying the foundation of a centralized administrative system. His successor, Shah Jahan, is celebrated for his architectural prowess, best exemplified by the Taj Mahal, a symbol of eternal love, and the Red Fort, an embodiment of Mughal power. The Mughal era was not just about political dominance, but it also marked a time of cultural synthesis, where Persian art forms amalgamated with Indian traditions, giving birth to a unique cultural landscape. Leaving the Mughal courts, we venture into the era of the Maratha resurgence. Welcome to the era of the Maratha Empire, a power that challenged the mighty Mughals and later the British. Emerging from the Western Deccan Plateau in the 17th century, the Marathas rose to prominence under the leadership of visionary warriors like Shivaji Maharaj. Their empire expanded rapidly, extending their influence over large parts of the Indian subcontinent. The Marathas were known for their guerrilla warfare tactics, a strategy that helped them resist foreign rule effectively. Their robust administrative system, coupled with a keen sense of diplomacy, further fortified their stronghold. The Marathas were not merely warriors, but also patrons of art and culture, leaving behind a rich legacy that continues to inspire generations. They stood as a beacon of resistance, challenging the onslaught of foreign invasions, and played a pivotal role in shaping the course of Indian history. From the Maratha forts, we sail to the shores where the British East India Company sets foot. Step into a dark chapter of Indian history, the British Raj, a period of colonialism, exploitation and transformation. In the late 17th century, a seemingly innocuous trade venture, the British East India Company set foot on Indian soil. Initially interested in the lucrative spice trade, the company gradually expanded its interests and influence. Over the course of nearly two centuries, the British East India Company transformed from a commercial enterprise into a political power, ruling vast territories and millions of people. This transformation was not without resistance. A pivotal moment in Indian history came to a head in 1857, an event known as the Sepoy Mutiny. Indian soldiers or sepoys employed by the company revolted against their British officers. The spark was a new rifle cartridge rumoured to be greased with cow and pig fat, offensive to both Hindu and Muslim soldiers, but the discontent ran much deeper, fuelled by years of cultural insensitivity and political disenfranchisement. The Sepoy Mutiny was a watershed moment, marking the end of the British East India Company's rule. In its aftermath, the British Crown took direct control of India, beginning the period known as the British Raj. The Raj was a time of profound change. British policies and institutions left an indelible imprint on Indian society, shaping its politics, education, economy and infrastructure. Yet, the Raj was also a time of exploitation. The extraction of India's wealth to Britain led to economic stagnation and famines. The cultural and social fabric of India was strained under the weight of British rule. The quest for identity and self-determination grew stronger, sowing the seeds of a freedom movement that would eventually lead to India's independence. As we leave the British Raj, we march with the masses towards independence. Witness the struggle for independence, the role of Mahatma Gandhi, and the painful partition of India. As the tides of colonialism receded, a new wave of hope and struggle emerged in the form of the Indian independence movement. At the heart of this movement was a man named Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, universally known as Mahatma Gandhi. A lawyer by education, a philosopher by nature, and a freedom fighter by choice, Gandhi emerged as the pivotal figure in India's struggle for freedom. His philosophy of Satyagraha, or truth force, and Ahimsa, meaning non-violence, 
resonated across the nation, mobilizing millions to voice their demand for independence. Gandhi's non-violent resistance was not just a political strategy, it was a way of life, a belief in the power of truth and non-violence to bring about social and political change. The impact of this philosophy was profound. It not only led to the British granting India its independence, but also inspired civil rights movements around the world. However, the joy of independence was marred by the anguish of partition. As the British left, they divided the subcontinent into two nations, India and Pakistan, based on religious lines. This partition led to one of the largest mass migrations in human history, with millions of Hindus, Muslims and Sikhs crossing the new borders amidst escalating communal violence. The consequences of this partition were catastrophic. It resulted in the loss of life of up to 2 million people and displaced around 14 million. The echoes of this traumatic event still resonate in the relations between India and Pakistan, shaping their shared history with a narrative of conflict and mistrust. The partition of India is a stark reminder of the human cost of political decisions, the complexity of religious identity and the painful legacy of colonial rule. With a heavy heart we move from the scars of partition to the birth of the constitution. Enter modern India, a democratic republic with a constitution that promises justice, liberty and equality to all. A nation that rose like a phoenix from the ashes of colonial rule, India embarked on a journey of self-governance and nation-building in 1950. The Constitution of India, the longest written constitution of any sovereign country in the world, came into effect on the 26th of January 1950. It replaced the Government of India Act of 1935 as the country's fundamental governing document, shaping the political and social landscape of the newly independent nation. The Indian Constitution, a living document, was drafted by a diverse group of visionaries, led by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, who is fondly remembered as the architect of the Indian Constitution. It articulates the values of justice, liberty, equality and fraternity, reflecting the aspirations of a nation that had just freed itself from the shackles of British rule. Dr. Ambedkar, a social reformer and a champion of human rights, was instrumental in ensuring that the Constitution safeguarded the rights of the most marginalized sections of society. He fought tirelessly against social discrimination and was a key figure in the empowerment of Dalits and women. His influence in shaping modern India is profound and continues to resonate even today. The Constitution of India also established the country's political structure, outlining the powers of the executive, the legislature and the judiciary. It enshrines the principles of secularism, ensuring the freedom of religion for all its citizens. It's a testament to the wisdom and foresight of the founding fathers of the Indian Republic. Over the years, India has seen numerous changes, both socially and politically, yet it has remained steadfast in its commitment to uphold the ideals enshrined in its constitution. The Indian democracy, often referred to as the world's largest democracy, is a testament to the strength of these ideals. From the echoes of the past, we emerge into modern India, a vibrant blend of traditions, cultures and forward thinking. As our journey through the annals of Indian history comes to a close, we find ourselves standing in a nation that is as diverse as it is united. We've traveled from the ancient cityscapes of the Indus Valley civilization through the philosophical musings of the Vedic period to the grandeur of the Maurya and Gupta empires. We've witnessed the cultural fusion brought by the arrival of Islam, the opulence of the Mughal reign, the resilience of the Maratha empire and the trials of the British Raj. We've seen the birth of a new nation from the ashes of the partition and marveled at the vibrant tapestry of modern India. And through it all, we've seen a common thread. The indomitable spirit of India, a land that has faced countless trials, yet continues to thrive and progress. In the end, we understand that India isn't just a country, it's a living, breathing chronicle of time itself.